everybody. Welcome to Lions Pride Tavern podcast number 95. Tonight we find out how we did in this weekend's alternative raid. Alternative? Alternate. Alter- alternate. Alternate raid <laughs> of Antorus the Burning Throne. But before all that, let's start off with introductions. I'm your host, Fafford. I play a Dwarven Beastmaster Hunter in the awesome game World of Warcraft. Next up is Lorelei. Hi, it's Lorelai, your Night Elf Arms Warrior. If you're missing Dizzy, we miss him too. He had to run, he couldn't make it tonight. Next up, Epistle Up North. Hi, I'm Andromeda. I play a Fire Mage. What? Oh, should we do <laughs> alt names? No, because I thought, we're doing no. alt runs? Yeah, I'm Epistle. I do play uh, Drunai Production Pally, but, you know, when I don't. <laughs> He's Andromeda. There you go. Wasn't Andromeda like uh, the queen of masculinity or something, the goddess of masculinity? (laughs) Yeah, I should either change the sex of my tune because it's a guy, (laughs) or I should change the name. I just haven't gotten around to it. (laughs) I don't know. I know Andromeda is a goddess, but I don't know of what. And Ant. Hi, I'm Ant, your night elf, Mist Weaver Monk. So guys, how is everything going this weekend? Pretty good. It it didn't rain today, so it was a good day. Oh my gosh, we were we were like in the upper 90s having a heat wave. Good. You can keep it. I don't want it. I had it last week. <laughs> yeah, but usually we get it and then it drifts over to you guys, so be prepared. Well, we it was toasty here for a few days, but then it's like it's like just perfect summer weather, so plus I'm on holidays, so it's very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Did you guys do anything exciting this week? Saw Ant-Man and the Wasp today. That was mm-hmm. good. I saw it yesterday. Ooh, that was Don't, really good. No one. spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. It was fun. Oh, sorry. All yeah, right. it was fun. I still got to bring up. I still got to bring it up though, because how are they possible when? Everything that happened in the Avengers, I, I just, it's a, it, you know, gotta we'll wait watch and see. It. We'll wait. He, he, watch he wasn't, it. He wasn't and you in the Avengers. for the end credits because we had like, I think there were like six of us there today and didn't even think about it, didn't even see it coming. We're like, what? Ah, all right. Definitely got to tell my wife we got to go watch it then. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't. Yes, he was not in the Avengers movie, nope. but he is part of the Avengers uh, world. Let's put He's it. part of the world. Well, he, he wants to be an Avenger really badly, and, well, yeah. Is he, is he really an Avenger, really? Mm-mm, no, he just went there to help in the last movie. Yeah, no, he, just, yeah, he was just there as, as kind of a sidekick. Yep. The only one that really got brought in was was Spider Man, or did he? Wait, I know he turned wait, it down. Wait. That's a that's a spoiler from a, from well, but Avengers that's from Four. A long time ago, if you but that was it that now. was from the yeah that was from the other event uh, uh, Avengers movie. Yeah. Well, no, he got I, he got the uh, he Tony got Stark pat in. on the shoulders Captain America and said, brought him in. No, because actually, it was, he needed some extra help. But it was actually uh, Tony Stark on the spaceship chasing after Thanos that he gave him the little tap on the shoulder and said, okay, kid, you're an Avenger now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was I do for remember Spider-Man. That. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. All right. Well, um, so I'm going to, I'm before we go on to what we did this week, because Dizzy's not here and I'm going to go uh, prep that really quick. Um, Epistle, you had a nice little interesting conversation here just shortly. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, sure. It's always nice to chat with a fan. I, I probably could have texted and saved him a little stress, but uh, I uh, was chatting uh, with Alexander, who's... Uh, uh, I didn't even catch the realm that he's on, but he's playing a pally. Is, uh, he called himself kind of a um, a baby WoW player, so just started uh, here in Legion, and he's getting geared up and getting ready to go. And so it was nice to hear kind of where he's at and what he's thinking about and what maybe the next steps uh, are for him for tanking. And give me a gave me a little inspiration for the uh, uh, tanking minute uh, today. So 
it is fun to hear when somebody's just starting to think they're going to try it and taking some baby steps in and tanking some instances and thinking about a raid. So it was a lot of fun, but I, maybe maybe I should have just typed a little bit because I think I scared him a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, you, you do a podcast and you sort of get a modicum of uh, uh, fame or infamy or something. And uh, so when you've been listening to somebody suddenly, you know, like on a podcast or TV or radio or something, and then you talk to them in person, it's like, yeah, it's a bit disorienting. And I, I kind of forgot that. So next time I'll just type and not freak them out. Well, and then I jumped in the channel too yeah. and started talking to him. They're all here. Ah. <laughs> that would have been funny if we would have just got everybody over. <laughs> yep. So, all right. Well, yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, he uh, he actually just uh, jumped into our Discord channel. And for anybody who's wanting to join that, please go ahead. It's in the description below and everywhere you're uh, listening to this podcast at. Um, you can jump in there. It was the one we created for our uh, our gnome race. And uh, we we still got it going, and we have now, it actually. Yeah. How do people how do people log into that again? I mean, I haven't had to, so I, I wouldn't know how to get there. Oh well, like I said, the uh, the link to the the, the uh, Discord channel is actually in the description, so they can just go to that link, and then they should be able to just join Discord. If you've never used Discord before, it can be a little challenging at first but just go watch a video on discord um there's plenty of them out there on youtube and it's pretty straightforward you can uh, do chat uh voice chat if somebody's on with you at the exact same time or there's a text channel now there's only one because we just want to limit it um usually there's more than one channel and then you can break it down into categories to talk about but we just have it as one overall category so yeah piece of cake to get into and, that's and then we could just sort of jump in. And if anyone's online, uh, they could uh, always say hello. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I don't know how many people actually jump on voice when we're there, but um, I knew when I uh, when I texted you and told you he was there that he had actually just uh, sent that text in uh, Discord. So I knew he was, you know, at least on Discord at the time. So. Awesome. Yeah, and if, uh, you know, I might as well do my spiel, right? If you guys want to advertise on uh, the podcast, we did have one advertiser one time. So you can go to advertisecast.com and uh, look us up, Lions Pride Tavern. And if you want to advertise on our podcast, then we get to do a little spiel on you. Um, you can go to our Facebook page, which is lionspridetavern.com. Or no, it actually is not. It is facebook.com forward slash lionspridetavern. And then we have our YouTube channel, our iTunes, uh, Google Play, Podomatic, Potable.co. Um, we're getting there. We're not everywhere, but we're getting there. So if you guys got any suggestions for us where we may be wanting to be listed, please hop on Discord, uh, throw that out there, or send me a personal email. My email's in the description below. Um, if you don't watch it on YouTube, Donna Bell, she's one of our, our – she was actually our tank this week. <laughs> Yeah, she, she does um, a terrific job. Yeah, she does all the. Uh, she draws a picture of somebody, and then while you listen to the podcast, you can watch her draw that picture. It's actually pretty cool. I actually have a. Uh, I actually have a. Um, what is this? A mouse pad, that have, of me and my two doggies, uh, saying "Blame the hunter." <laughs> oh, I nice. Like that. Yeah, that was for my birthday. <laughs> I got a T-shirt and a coffee mug. <laughs> it's always the hunter's fault. Except the this, hunter. Except this week was blame the healer. Yeah, right? Yep. <laughs> so he did ask me, though, um, if I had died this week, because he listens to our podcast. And I responded telling him, no, as Fafford, I did not die. <laughs> but. You but did die. Sarla, I did a few times and i want to say again that you guys run into me when you have the flame oh um, <laughs> no, no, no. no 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 
<laughs> that was I, not I how ran it came out. I went the back, and somebody <laughs> ran right along with me, and I'm like, I'm trying to get I don't know who that was because I killed them, but I'm like, I'm trying to get away. I don't know where to go. I, I was I was range for change, so I was at the back. <laughs> I saw everything. I'm like, could someone mark uh, Fafford, please, so we know how to run to him, <laughs> just in the middle of when and, and the play was going to come out. And someone did, which was lovely. lovely. And then... It turns out the mark was suddenly running away from me, but had a debuff, and so you ended up killing two or three other people. You actually ran right to the tanks, but uh... <laughs> I, I actually ran. I didn't have it, and I ran through somebody that did. <laughs> oh, it looked, and, uh, like, it looked like you had it, but well, yeah, no, it did it eventually. Did. No, that's what Ant was trying to say. <laughs> no, I did it myself. <laughs> but it, see, it was the healer instinct in me to get closer to the tanks. So I could heal them is what caused that to happen. That's a, so it wasn't that's, my a fault. That, that's a bad healer instant. Uh, I was going to say that is very bad. <laughs> Fabric, do we have to do healer 101? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm learning healer 101. Hey, you I, are. I did you pretty are. good this week. You I, admit. I did admit. I did tell you you did very good healing this week. I do need to apologize, though, for our podcast fans that may watch our live stream. Um, <laughs> so. I've been playing another game, and when I do, I usually do uh, not push to talk, and I forgot to change that. So when I did the live stream on Friday night, my push to talk was not activated on my recording software, so it was picking up everything in the room, and I happened to be watching MASH. I did a whole, like, MASH, uh, what do they call those when you just stay at home and watch it all weekend? Marathon. A marathon, yes. I, I stayed home and watched. I'm in season five right now. But anyway, I had it going in the background, and I got 17 copyright violations from YouTube. <laughs> saying they weren't going to let that one go out at all. Oops. <laughs> so Did you have to, to cut the audio? Down. or No, I just, I just, I could have. I just left the uh, the thing up there, but I just I just deleted the whole thing. I figured one, yeah. one day wasn't a big deal. Um, now, I did not get it on this second day on Saturday, even though I had it playing in the background. I had my push to talk turned on. <laughs> oh, so people can see that glorious moment and decide for themselves how it actually went down. Well, there was a few people saying, no, but we still heard MASH in the background. But I think what it is, is you got to hear the MASH jingle for the program to pick up on it. Um so I don't know how I got 17 copyright violations because in the two hours we played, that would have been their 20 minute episodes, you know, <laughs> that would only been six. <laughs> hmm. so there must I have wonder been... if it's any time they play the music, even if it's not, you know, because there's music, they play that theme throughout the show. Oh, that's possible. I'm sure the theme is copyrighted and that, I know that's what, that's what uh, YouTube picks up on. It's not necessarily the voices, although sometimes it is. Because I mean, man, what would their database be like if they every every show that was copyrighted, if they had the whole show there that it was running through? You'd never process your video. I mean, all right, it already takes you know so much time now to do it. So, but anyway, well, let's uh, let's talk about how we did this week. So I got the logs up, so it looks like uh, Friday we did uh, Garothi Worldbreaker, Fellhounds, uh, ENR, Portal Keeper, and Torn High Command, and ENR all in one shot. And then we got to King Garoth. <laughs> he's, he's the Bane. He's our whatever the, the, the night hold one was. I can't remember now. The, the lady in the, uh, in, that we do in a circle. Where you have to go from light side to dark side. There's always Maybe one boss. Something. There's always one Maybe boss that we just do horrible on, no matter how many times we do it. Well, and with this one, I, I do want to say, I believe strongly, there, we only did two polls on it, but I believe strongly what happened there was we didn't have the DPS. It just, it wasn't there. I mean, yeah, there were people dying to to things that we always do the beam and you know um i don't think i fell off friday i fell off saturday on one i backed right off the edge i forgot the edge was even there <laughs> and i was backing up to get away from one of the balls coming around <laughs> at the outside yeah that wasn't good yeah ads weren't going down very fast 
No. I, bl I blame the DPS. <laughs> I, I'll agree with that. So, but then on Saturday, we came back, and we got one wipe right at the, the very first one, and then killed it the second time, but I think that's because we brought in a couple heavy hitters. <laughs> um, did, we, did we have some people switch? To... We did. Yeah, I think we, yeah, it was about two people switched over. Yeah, that was kind of... I don't think we had the DPS there either, because we went on... Well, we hit the Enrage timer, didn't we? Wasn't that the one yep. we hit the not, Enrage timer on? Not on that no. one, I don't think. No, that was Bear on... Uh, Bear 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I was, oh, I was DPSing right. yeah. my little heart out as much as I could on my very, very green tune. <laughs> yep, then we moved on to Veramathras, and a single pull on that one. Um... And then we did Coven and a single pull on that one. Went to Agrimar, we did a single pull. And in the last few minutes, well, actually, it came down to just the last little seconds. We got Argus down. Seconds. Yeah. Microseconds, because we had uh, the, uh, oh, what are those balls? Uh, Great big we balls. Call them death. Orbs. Yeah, the big, big things that you're supposed to. Sh kill and then they go away we let them go because we just said concentrate on the boss and man i was right in a corner and they were just coming in on me and the boss went down i was like yes <laughs> yep so we got argus down so we did a full clear on a weekend that was that was pretty cool but we did bring in a couple of heavy hitters i know six has switched over um and four i think was the other one that switched over um, and just those and, two, and Thiel was carrying us the whole way along too. Oh yeah, well Thiel, yeah, yeah he didn't even, he didn't even. Uh, he stayed on his main. Yeah. yeah, I was on my main. Oh, were you? Uh, were you healing on on, on yeah. Ant? I was. Mm -hmm. Is that Faye was, was only number two? <laughs> no, Faye was ahead of you. Were number th you were number three consistently <laughs> all night. No, was, well that that's because I had a. Uh, a mythic healer, uh, two mythic healers ahead of me. <laughs> or was, yeah, because Faye was playing hers, right? Yeah, it was, mm -hmm. uh, Faye and I were on our mains. Yeah, so I didn't have any choice. So if you guys weren't there, I'd have been number one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I feel the love. <laughs> hey, I gave you one compliment tonight. I don't know if I can give you another one yet. <laughs> Nice. Oh no, I like playing a pally because I can heal myself. <laughs> Whoa, wow, there's the trust in the healers right yeah. there. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. On Lorelei, I throw bandages on. I if I'm if I'm down, I got I got the bandage supply going too. Many times I'm sitting over there on the circle side waiting for that soul burst to go off and I'm just bandaging. Well, and I know how squishy my mage is, and so I was using my shields all the time and doing everything I could just to stay alive. I had pots, I had my shield, yeah, because I knew I was going to die just by being one-shot by mechanics if I didn't. Not, not that any mechanics got me, just bragging a little. <laughs> Although you did get chewed out by a tank. <laughs> well, that, that, that may have happened, yeah. <laughs> but but really i in my defense <laughs> i was i was uh, i was aware of what the mechanic was i knew the danger and i timed it so that i blinked through without dying but yeah i, I did deserve the little tank scolding <laughs> nice so yeah i think we did pretty well i mean we did a full clear that's that's not yeah. bad guys mm -hmm. um, no it was fun I do have to say, Ant, um, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, about this prior to podcast, but I wanted to add to our conversation on that. It's really good when you get the raid gear. That also helps you heal a lot better, too. <laughs> you know, it, it to be honest with you, it does, because you, I from compared to what you were doing the night before and even last week, it was like tremendous. The amount you got better. Yeah, I got like three or four pieces of gear um, that shot me way up. Now, I still don't have a, a tier set yet. I got one piece finally. I actually, it was funny because I rolled one 
and then Faye rolled one and she's like, well, I've got the, you know, the better version. So I'll just give that to me. And, uh, I'd, I'd rolled it. So, um, I had two pairs of pants and I was like, well, I can wear one, <laughs> but so I'm waiting for that other piece to drop. So then hopefully everything will go a little smoother and I'll, I'll bump up, uh, you know, one above one of you guys. <laughs> Don't push it, Fafford. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to say this is when we did Coven, um, we had issues on the first poll um, with Amanthul and everything. And I was actually talking to Durag and was saying, I don't know if we have the heels. And Durag was like, I don't know if we have the DPS. So then I kind of said, all right, let's try it one more time. And let's hope that Fafford stays alive. Because I think if Fafford stays alive, then we'll be <laughs> able to actually, you know, get through this despite the fact of not having the DPS. And guess what? You stayed alive and we did it. I did. Yay. <laughs> yep. I even used I even used a lock cookie. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, it was I was down, I was I literally my I watched my health drop in and I, I hit myself with rejuve and it just wasn't going up and I was like, Oh, lock cookie, bang. And it was like two thirds of my health back and I was like, <laughs> Well, helped. you know, I actually thought like despite the fact that I was on my, you know, main healer and I can do like, you know, one heal or two heals and I can get most of those alts up. But the problem is, is that you get hit on an alt with some of those, you know, hits. It's like you can't heal through it. And it's yeah. it's actually kind of challenging. And it was actually fun. This raid was like <laughs> doing it was fun. And nice. We haven't done Coven you know, on any level for a long time either. Yeah. Yeah. Um... The last time we did Coven is when we went through it on normal. Yeah. And, and so, then I mean, once we know, realized we could skip it, we just, we started skipping it. So, that, I mean, that wasn't bad, you know, to, to do, you know, to go through there. And, and as few times as we, it took us to get it down, because, you know, as I said, we haven't done that in a long, long time. I figured most everybody had forgotten all the mechanics. Well, and then we didn't have a DK tank where he could, you know, like when the, the little soldiers come out. And you got to get out of the way, you know, Durag would always pull all of them to one side and you had this huge gap. Well, now we just had little tiny gaps that we had to run through. Yeah. And yeah, that was tricky. Yeah. I was actually using my transcendence and putting it like up near the wall so that I could get like, just push myself right to the end. So I wasn't dying by it. <laughs> so no, I was really impressed. Um, it was a little different healing that because as a, as a range DPS, it's not a big deal, you know, uh, and then you run around and you kill all the, the, the little bosses when they pop up. And as a healer, I could just kind of move out close to one of the edges and still heal the tanks and, and get the guys that are going around the room. So it was, it was a little bit different, uh, feeling. Um, that one wasn't as move intensive as some no. of the other fights. That one, you guys basically can stand in the middle. And you're just trying to avoid yep. anything like, you know, the swords that are spinning around you. It's just, you know, avoiding things. But for the most part, you stand in the middle and you're in range of pretty much everybody. Yeah, but it's not like the Argus fight. Holy moly. You start getting those little swirlies. You're right in the middle of a cast and you got to move because mm -hmm. the swirly goes under your feet. It's just, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> I, it's, I switch out. Yeah. I, as soon tough. as I see, the, see that message, I move over. As a DPS, melee, I move over to the other one. Oh yeah, yeah. You know the the Argus fight for a healer is like it's more so just you know if you're in the middle of a cast, just move, like really just move. Like don't even worry about it because if you stand in it, you're gonna die. If you don't move, then you know and heal somebody, it's just it's pointless. It's and just think of doing that on heroic, how much harder it is. Yeah, mechanics yeah. always uh, always trump your cast or your DPS, and and so knowing that helped going back to DPS for, for last night because it was uh, it was knowing that, you know, though I'm a caster, it's all about the movement. And so I was trying to find the times to do the casts. And so I wasn't very efficient. My DPS was not high. Well, actually, I didn't do bad do too badly for the for the gear I had. Uh, but there's no way I was really producing any uh, significant damage. Now, I can't imagine doing that 
and trying to call a raid. That that would be brain melting. So hats off to Joe Bowie, whether he's listening to us or not in his semi-retirement state, but he did uh, amazing at keeping his DPS up while still raid leading. Yeah, definitely. Now, you're playing Arcane, right? Uh, no, Fire, because that's, that's, uh, that was high when I last left off playing okay. the tunes. So, I thought um, you were Arcane. Well, no, I was playing Fire, and I do like the fact that you can so, sort of throw some blasts in and a pyro, and you can Scorch on the run. So I did have some ability to do damage while, uh, while mobile, so I was you know, taking advantage of that as much as I could. Nice. So we, uh, we asked our fans last week um, if there was some things that we missed um, for stuff we should do before the expansion hits. And our number one fan, Anaris, she responded to us. <laughs> so um, anybody care to read that, uh, Lorelai? Sure. She suggested that we work on the Mage Tower. I, I will admit I have not put a lot of effort into it. I actually ran my little low-level shaman, my you know, not very well geared and just died before I even got to the boss. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> check out the Brawlers Guild. There are awards and titles that could become unavailable. I've done a little bit of that. Actually, that was not bad. I I enjoyed what I did to get one of the mounts. It was kind of fun. Uh do some PvP. Blah. N- <laughs> oh, gosh. What? What? Ugh. What's that? I know. I don't know why she what is suggested that? that to us. She, she must know us by now. Well, I'll tell you, I, I did as much of it as I could to, because I actually out, where what is it called? Winter Grasp? Is that what was out in Northrend? <laughs> Beats me. Sure. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> yeah. one where you could actually go sit in a tower and just shoot people on the ground. So I'm all about that. I did that enough to buy the basic pvp mounts and then i was done with it i said okay no, i don't have to do that you, ever you know it's funny i actually got a whole bunch of pvp um uh achievements uh, over the last few days doing the next thing you're going to be talking about yeah i was grandson on all that like who the heck are you and oh transmog items i do that yeah i do that i, d- I did not like ashran though couldn't stand that place but they had some of the best transmog gear no, I'm saying the next thing is the fishing friends. The fishing um, pole. I'm working I, on that. I finished. I finished my uh, the, my fisher friends achievement, but to do that you go into raid, and I don't know what it is, but I think people what? in PvP servers love to create the raids for working on the fisher friends, and so I don't know why there's this one person seemed determined to try to talk to the vendor, and so there's. I just had enough. Forty of us sitting there fishing, bored out of our skulls, and somebody comes in flag PVP. What do you think's going to happen to them? So I, I got I got all these achievements for PVP by just literally standing there oh, and oh. fishing. Just being in the fishing raid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought there was something where you had to go in. Oh, I'm like, oh man, what? Okay. Oh, That's they did that in Northrend, and I'm glad that hasn't been the case lately. Yeah, I haven't quite gotten to where I've got the um. The, the fishing pole because don't you have to get all the achievements for doing all the fishing quests there's a few quests where you have to go out and get specific kinds of fish i think if yeah. i remember correctly and that that wasn't too hard to get actually now there's there's a couple that i never see come up there's something about a raft a rocket raft or something that i have never seen show up but maybe i just haven't looked for it enough but... there's a yeah if there's guides you can follow that'll that'll take you to different places and tell you where you should fish to get all those different items i mean you never find them otherwise unless you go to a specific place and find an item and use it and but it's worth yeah. checking those out uh, that doesn't take too long the fisher friends that takes a little longer yeah i've only finished it completely on lorelei but when the fair's out, that's a pretty good thing to do. Get into a group and put your funny hat on, and it, it goes really fast. All right, so, yep, do your Fisher Friends. Um, you'll still be able to do it, but y- you probably won't get a lot of people to set up a raid with, and then it'll just take forever. Let's see, look up your Legion achievements that don't, let me see, what does it say? Legion achievements you don't have that you might want to get. Oh, the mount. I'm I'm almost to the point, folks, where I'm gonna go to WoW vendor and buy my way into a group. <laughs> no, seriously, I found one, thirty-nine bucks. I may go ahead and do that. 
Um, American? You're made of money. Yeah, well, no, I'm going to put that aside. It's like if I get completely desperate for that mount. Birthday, birthday present to yourself. Birthday Christmas. Yep, there we go. Uh, let's see. And then she talks about mounts. Let's see. Oh, farming rep for mounts, like the nether ray mounts. Oh, I did that one. Oh, my God, that took forever. What, what do you have to do for that one? I haven't done uh, that. Kill, just you, you get little quests. You get daily quests to do. And that's what you have to do is just do those quests until you, and you don't get a lot. So it just takes forever. And then there's usually like eight other people out there. So you have to kill things that take forever to respawn. Let's see. And let's see. Just go out there and find stuff to put on the auction house. Now, start, so you, now start she old. mentions cleaning your bags out of old resources, Bloods mm -hmm. of Sargeras, that kind of stuff. Use them up. Now, I'm going to say, and I wish Dizzy was here because he could correct me, but I'm going to say don't. Put those things in void storage um, if you're using it because that's how I made over a million gold in just a short period of time, I still had all the stuff from the last expansion, especially the potions that gave you the uh, ex extra ex EXP, like three times EXP for 20 minutes or, or whatever it was. I had like 35 of those mm -hmm. because I hadn't leveled yeah. up my other tunes and I just had them sitting around. I combined them all into one tune and just left them there. And then I started listening to the Goblin Gold cast, which if you guys watched our... Uh, our uh, live stream Matt hopped in right at the end of our, our raid there and he says yep it's a possibility they might be getting Goblin Gold cast back. oh I hope so mm, I nice. them. but when the Goblin Gold cast when I started listening to them they were talking about selling older stuff so this might be an opportunity here too now it's one of those things you know if you have a watch and you drop it it's not worth anything but if you drop it and wait a thousand years it's priceless, right? So I'm not saying wait a thousand years, but you know, give it some time. And, okay. Uh, yeah, especially so I... newer, newer stuff because people are gonna that new change with professions where you're gonna be able to start making things right away. People are gonna want mats, so yeah, you might as well start putting that. Yeah, this close to an expansion, you don't really want to sell mats for things right now yeah. the bloods there again they're soul bound you know so I, I know you can't sell those but i'm talking about just the stuff that's sellable so yeah clean up your bank bags but watch that old stuff um because there's still going to be somebody when this new expansion comes out goes oh i really want to get into that and they have to you know make a couple of choices and how they want to get involved with the new expansion um you know i know well, one, i know some people that start off at level one and work their way up because they yeah. want to but yeah. but if you have blood of Sargeras, what's the best thing to trade it in for now and what will it be the best to trade it in for mats. in six months but which which mats like if i'm gonna spend them which ones are likely gonna turn out the best i would <laughs> say i would go with uh leathers and um herbs yeah definitely Herbs, you can always, always, and since I would especially just go in and just start buying the herbs you have now or just start going out and, and just, I don't even know why we have to do dailies right now because th this is a great time to just run around and farm everything. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, and, yeah, and like even, even pets because this, there's going to be that, you know, if you have a thousand pets, you're going to get an achievement as soon as the expansion kicks in. I found five pets on one of my alts. Just I don't even know where they came from. I put them. I said, well, "Let me just put them on the auction house." I made ninety-five thousand gold in twenty-four oh. hours selling five pets. Yeah. So people want stuff, and Very nice. the only thing I've sold off have been all my relics. The extra relics have been filling up my bank because I'm afraid to get rid of them. I just said, <laughs> "You know what? I don't. Why do I need them? I'm just going to sell them all." Nice. I've got See, no, so much fish now from all these uh, quests I did this last week. So all these fisher friend quests. So I bet you I could probably sell those. I had like a 25 pound carp from when I was playing. Oh, vanilla, you kept one of those? <laughs> and I kept one of them and I actually sold it. And it was like, it was like 2000 gold. I sold it for. It was unreal. It, you oh, need it for an achievement. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well. Inflation back in the day. <laughs> well, what you already would it got, cost? You've got credit for it already. I'm sure I so did, you might yeah. as well sell it. 
<laughs> so yeah, don't you know, don't underestimate the power of laziness when it comes to the auction house. <laughs> I I yep. remember Mac and Dex talking about that all the time. Don't underestimate it because people are lazy. They're not going to want to go out and do it themselves. They're just going to want to buy it. Yeah, I'll need to tune okay. up my uh, I'll need to tune up my auction tune to get that uh, up and going. Yeah. So what else you got there, Lorelai? Um... Um, just make sure that you have enough gold going in. and uh... yeah, Unless you're going to yeah, buy that 5 million gold mount. Oh. No. I don't well, care how much. I'm saving mine for the pet, which I won't have to spend anyway. I just have to, I guess, put it all on one tune, have the million, and then just give it back. It's like, hey, uh, win-win. And Ant's going to buy the mount for us so we can just use it and raid. Right, oh, Ant? All oh, right. Not a chance. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll never. I'll I don't know. even have a million gold because this tune, not on this tune anyways, on my horde character I do. <laughs> horde? That's on a completely different server that I don't play anymore because I <laughs> converted to Alliance. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. <laughs> you know, I've got, uh, I've, I've got a little add-on that tells me between all of mine, I have one million gold. Well, there you go. What am I supposed to do with that? Is something I can buy with that? No, You'll be gotta... able to get a pet with it, and you never have to spend it. You just have to have it. Right. Oh, but I have to compile it all into one. Yeah, I'm pretty though, sure right? you're going to have to compile it. So, uh, But that's I'll after the expansion. Oh, yeah. You, you'll have to run a quest line for that, so you'll be able to save it for a little uh, while. No worries. Now, here's a, here's a dumb question, though. There's no uh, potions coming out or any other way to sort of speed up uh, uh, leveling and the next expansion is there? Not that I've heard. No, Probably you know what? I'll bet if you research. make that potion of leveling and I think, wasn't there a treasure potion? I thought there was a limit though. Treasure, seeking, only... treasure seeking potion. I'll, I bet that's going to be a good one to make. Start making those right now and who knows? All I know is that I go back to my garrison and I've been collecting the resources. You know, I do the resource. Uh, missions in my garrison so I gather resources so I have 10,000 resources and I go in I go to the little auction guy or the little selling guy that sells you mats and I buy the fur and sometimes the ore not all the time and I put that on the auction house and sell it daily Ooh, that's clever. oh yeah I'll bet the leather you do because the ore I... they killed that by letting everybody go in and mine right what the um, heck? But the fur you also need for making the bags. And I know mm -hmm. Mac was saying, hey, I'm still getting three grand a bag for my yeah. for my bags. And I've been doing the same thing with my, my one weaver has been going in there and making it, making the bags. I put those on the auction house. I get two or three a week by the time I'm done. But all my other tunes, they supply her with that fur. But you can sell the fur outright on the auction house for a pretty good clip. Mm, nice. I've, I've uh, gave, given up uh, really tailoring on my mage. Uh, I got so far in trying to learn how to create stuff and thought, this is just an expense and I don't see a money-making route through that. It's not like there's bags that are a higher capacity than uh, earlier expansions, so I've never really seen the point of tailoring in this one. Well, and here's the deal. Everything I've read so far has said that there will be new bags, but they're they're like three or four slots more than what you've got so those bags that you do at your garrison are still going to be hot yeah because yeah. they're still worthwhile yeah shoot even if you want to put some time into those um ones from pandaria still sell you've, you've got to take time with the mats but hey you, if you've got farms go in there and start putting you know yeah. cloth in fact i haven't even been to mine yet this summer and everybody i've got has a plot that's got cloth in it and i need to go get all that out of the ground yeah nice <laughs> i mean I'm, i've got hex weave uh, bags on most of my tunes and i won't be replacing those anytime soon and they're never getting full so well yeah. and if they're only going to go up two or three slots but it's going to cost you, you know, an arm and a leg to get those. Why would you take? Why would you take the time? Even if you have to farm the crap out of something to get that bag that gives you three more slots. Yeah. Why would you? Why would you do it? I've got hex week which bag is, and all mine too. Which is making me wonder if. And I thought this was the last expansion and sort of thinking ahead now is is interesting. Um, last expansion, 
I was trying to gather all my mats to level up my professions as quickly as I could. I never bought any, but I tried to, you know, gather everything. And I'm thinking the prices go insane for the first few weeks. And there's no reason, given our group or what we do, that we should be trying to level up. Um, maybe a couple things, you know, like, so I might do jewel crafting um, on a pistol because that'll be really helpful for the raid. Uh, maybe enchanting um, could also be useful, but I'm sure between us we'll have somebody who's doing that. And you could probably sell the mats and make a killing for the first month or so. That's what I'm doing. I'm going yeah. to have all my tunes are going to have different professions so that I can just essentially sell them and help everybody that needs help too. But not not crafting professions per se, more um, uh, more gathering. Yes, I have. I mean, every I have tunes that just you know one's mining, one's herbalism. And that's what they both are, just to do that and to feed it to my other tunes. Yeah, Draenor tried to kill that, but that didn't stick. No. Uh, yeah, tailoring was a bust this time, though, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, is that we can get better gear because we have a good group working together that, you know, I could try to craft a piece for a pistol just to get us that little extra wedge for a week until we're getting better gear, and I'm not really sure that's really worth uh, his blacksmithing anymore. Well, here's one of the things that I don't know if everybody always thinks about this, but uh, food for raids. So in order to get your the next food raid food uh, item, you know, that's for the next expansion, you're going to have to do quite a bit, I'm sure, just like this last time. So the old raid food is still going to be hot and you can get that on the auction house and sell it for a pretty good penny, I'm sure, once oh, the expansion yeah. comes out. But, you know, because we're working with the same people and we're doing it consistently, I mean, other people might be in the same uh, situation as we are. If we're really being clever, wouldn't it be smart for us to say, you know, mommy's always doing raid food, right? Mm -hmm. So she's always dropping those. What have we actually said for the first two or three weeks? Those who want to opt in, um, just throw all the food her way. Everything we find, not selling it, just giving it to her, get her ready, leveled up, knowing that she'll be creating the food for us you know throw the same thing for somebody for jewel crafting until they top off and go you know i'm fine i don't need any more um but just kind of throw everything one person's way for the good of everybody knowing that they'll then go ahead and do enchants and jewel crafting and that for anybody who needs it who's been kind of participating in the system well that's a good idea but when the expansion you know comes out a lot of those guys are going to be out there trying to get the next best uh you know, enchant that you can get, which just like when this one hit, it took forever to go out there and finally get those those uh, recipes for the enchants. But now mm. they're common. Yeah, it wasn't it, it wasn't just mats though either, was it? It was there's a no. whole rigmarole and hoops you had to jump through and dungeons and all that just to get them there. Yeah. So yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't a straight line of just having the mats and leveling it up. Right, but I mean. You know, for the first few weeks as it comes out, you know, everybody's going to be leveling and we're going to have that lull before everybody gets there to, what is it now, 120? Isn't that where we're going? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So once we get to 120, then we're allowed, you know, from that point to get the raids. Now, they may limit it like they did the last time where, you know, um, the normal or the the Jeez, what did they do? They did the Mythics first? Oh, oh yeah. Yay, gated content. Well, yes. LFR didn't come out for forever. I know. So, you know, you really had to go out there and work to get it. So uh, everybody's going to be rushing to go get that new content. And that's the time you want to go back to the old content and farm it up. So that's just a little tip I brought from the Goblin Goldcast. So, all right, guys, we need to move along. I hear that music. It's time for Lorelei's Pet Battle Minute. Hi, pet collectors. Today I'd like to talk about another way you can get pets without having to spend your life savings on the auction house. One of the easiest ways is to level your archaeology. While you're out leveling or flying around to get exploration achievements, it's easy to stop and work at dig sites along the way. 
In the beginning, it took a lot of time collecting fragments, but since Draenor, all dig sites will reward nine fragments. And if you want to focus on only one continent, you can choose Kalimdor, Eastern Kingdoms, or Draenor to level from 1 to 700. If you're just starting, the best place to begin is Draenor, as any artifact you craft can be created and turned in to brands Bronzebeard, Graxus if you're Alliance, or Shrika if you're Horde, for fragments from any faction. Now, you can't trade them in until you have your archaeology level to 600, but it's easy to collect them, and they don't take up much room. Anything created for Pandaria becomes an item that can be vendored and takes up inventory space, so just sell as you create. When you start out, you're only going to get four of the ten buttons available, but these will be used to combine the more common fragment types, Dwarf, Fossil, Night Elf, and Troll. Now, pets are why we're here, so these areas will reward you fragments for pets. Uh, in Draenor, you can go to Erica, the Arakoa will give you the Ancient Nest Guardian. Draenor will also give you the Frost Wolf Ghost, oh, I can't say that, Frost Wolf Ghost Pup. Nice. Uh, dwarfs will give you Clockwork Gnome, which if, if anybody is a pet battler, you know that's a good one to have. You can also get fossilized uh, pets, the hatchling and the pterodax hatchling from the Eastern Kingdoms in Kalimdor. You, the voodoo figurine from the Eastern Kingdoms in Kalimdor for the trolls. And the crawling claw from Oldham for the Tolvir. And don't forget to keep collecting and using those current pet charms before the expansion. And have a great week. All right. With no dizzy, next up, our tank and address. What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking? What's wrong with tanking in a dress? This week's Come Out Me a Tanking Minute. Back to the Tanking 101. We're going to be talking about stepping up and stepping out. <laughs> tanking can be terrifying, especially if you haven't done it much. And especially with sometimes the negative feedback slash trolls that you can find in uh, World of Warcraft. And, and I'm not talking about uh, horde trolls. I'm talking about people trolls who give you, let's say, not the most helpful feedback. So recently I did, well, a few months ago, I did uh, an LFR. Uh, and I can't remember what ever possessed me to do it. But there I was on a pistol. I was uber geared. I know the heroic mechanics. LFR is easy cakes, no problem at all, and yet, uh, due to some mechanics, we wiped. Um, now, whose fault was it according to the trolls? Well, of course it was the tanks. So I started to get uh, a bunch of abuse from one angry player in particular. But you know what? When you're tanking, you've always got to assume that there's someone who's got their own issues and their own problems, and who knows what they're going through. Uh, don't let their space uh, affect you tanking, having fun, enjoying the game, and getting better. So sometimes you run into someone who sounds cranky, they might be a little uh, annoyed, they might kind of yell or, you know, in large text, uh, large uh, capital letters, tell you what you should be doing. Well, if they're right and it's helpful, yeah, you're better off. So you didn't know something and you learned something, that's all good. Uh, if you're still learning and someone yells at you but they don't know what to do or what to say, they're just negative, they exist, they're a troll, you just ignore them and move on, right? So I'm always tanking, even when I'm doing new content, I'm looking for suggestions, I'm looking to see if someone knows how we can do this better, and if they have a great idea, we'll try it. Otherwise, you know, I tend not to worry about it. A pro tip, though, if you're going in, you're new to tanking, you're new to an instance, if you type right off the bat saying, I'm new, uh, and I'm going to need a couple of uh, pointers in terms of the way to handle this, people are usually better if they know up front that's what the experience is going to be. And if someone bails in the group, hey, <laughs> you're the tank, you've got a short uh, uh, wait, you don't have to worry about it quite so much. But how do you deal with angry players like this? Obviously, you need to develop some thick skin through practice. I've got three basic uh, strategies. My usual one is ignore. They don't exist. I don't care. I meet them if I need to. You know, if they've got issues and don't know what they're talking about, I just ignore them. Uh, second is, if it's a situation where I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm not getting any help, um, I'll just leave. I'll shrug it off and then go on and find something more fun. Uh, to do. Maybe you do a little more research on the instance, whichever. 
the the third trick you can use if you're feeling particularly aggressive for some reason or other i did this the other day one person was being pretty blatantly uh a twit in lfr and so i simply typed i'm not uh, playing uh, i'm not going to pull until this player is gone and what do they do they pull the boss um to try to force the issue and as they did that the vote passed for them to be removed so they got killed by the boss because i didn't ta uh, taunt they got killed by the boss they get kicked out of raid and then i taunt the boss and we go through and finish uh the poll with no problems at all so yeah sometimes you play hardball and say you know if this raid wants to be sensible and work together let's do that by removing the noisemaker so sometimes that's the right way to do but again through practice you develop uh, some some uh, thick skin and as always you're really looking for people who can be helpful either some online resources who can help you get better at your game or people even who can sort of go you know you need to not stand in that blue thing because it'll kill you <laughs> always helpful advice right so stepping up tanking can be terrifying but do it to have fun and to learn from people around you and that's come at me a tanking minute not only thick skin but thick armor <laughs> yeah that you get through <laughs> boss kills right <laughs> next up we have sometimes it's hard to play my monk in raids i'll go ahead and play her anyway forget the trees and grow a pair of fists it's hard it's hard it's hard Ants missing it to healing. The composition of your raid team is crucial. This expansion didn't really see much of the you need this certain healer to be successful. Our raid team was very diverse and we made it work with all different types of healers. We at some point had every healing class. In the new expansion, they seem to be making it that you'll need certain classes like the Holy Paladin for tank heals and the rest of Druid for raid heals. But we don't know for sure how this is going to work. With the changes to all the classes, it seems to be making all healing specs to be very desirable. Discipline priest, priests and their major overhaul of changes, or the monks with the utility of being able to heal better single target, as well as the raid. These changes make the classes that were the least played in raids to be in contention with the most being a necessity to bring. As we get closer to launch, we will see these healers are going to see how the other healers start to finally come together and we'll be able to really focus on each, each class and what they bring to raid and which ones we will recommend. Awesome. Yeah, one thing you guys got to understand when there's new expansion, it's like a new CEO of the company or a new boss. They have to change everything up to make it their way. <laughs> so... Uh, it'll be fun. I think the new expansion is going to be great. So we'll see what they do. I Hopefully it's not that specific. I really hope not. Yeah, that's it's the thing that stinks is that's what everybody's been you know, hearing. Talking and it's about, going to yeah. be very specific, but they're trying to make it so that, like, like I said, the Disc Priest is becoming like a, you're going to want it because of how they're completely revamping their entire class. Well, no, it makes sense, you know, I mean, get specific things in there for that specific type. But um, when, you, when you're doing a raid group like ours, uh, sometimes you just don't have the choices, you know. Yeah. And until they get a good system out there where you can get good raiders, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be an adventure. <laughs> it always is. All right, next up. It's WFN News, Warcraft Fafford News. Now, the Neither Disruptor is at 17% at this particular time, um, so I'm assuming it's going to be up by the time we put this up, but it may not be because the other two, the Mage Tower and the um, Command Center, are up now. So with this whole thing of having the Mage Tower up all the time, I'm not sure how this is all working. So... Bear with me if I'm a little off on the Nether Disruptor, although it does have Seal Your Fate, so you get your extra tokens this week, and Epic Hunter. It's just a matter of when it's going to hit. So, uh, the weekly uh, event for this week is Time Walking Panda Land. 
Hey, Ooh, go I like back that and, one. Yeah, go back and do all nice. those brewmaster ones. <laughs> I always liked those. I thought it was so cool. It was like like they had a fraternity. They they got together and said, what are we going to do with these pandas? Oh, well, let's do uh, Oktoberfest. <laughs> And do all this drinking. I think it was great. I really do. Uh, wow tokens are at 205 from 209, so they're dropping a little bit. But I have a feeling as soon as the expansion hits, um, yeah. Yeah, I they're going to be rocket. Worth putting up. Kaflui. That'd be a yeah. good way to start building some gold, too. Yeah, yeah. Or real money, because, you know, you can trade them in for 15 bucks. <laughs> so. All right, guys. Uh, fantastic. That's a good show. We did uh, fairly well. Um, I want to thank all of our uh, fans for listening and, and especially you guys for, for being here. Sorry, Dizzy. He had to bail right at the last second. He was up here with us and then found out he had to go. So, uh, And that happens. Real life gets in the way sometimes. But uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I want to thank Charm for all of her beautiful music. Please go visit her website and her YouTube channel. Uh, the links are in the description below. Ben Sound at bensound.com. Vincent Moretto for the heavy metal tavern music. And to all the fans, thanks for coming. Guys, thanks for coming. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. See ya, see ya everyone.